I have been joined by Dr. Grace Ayen Sudankwa. She's a member of NDC's COVID-19 response team and parliamentary candidate for Esikado Ketan constituency. And we're also expecting Barbara Asha Ayisi, who's the Deputy Minister for Works and Housing. Good morning. Good morning. Grace, how, how are, are you? you? Thank you so much for being here with us. Thank how you. How are you doing? How's the team doing, the COVID-19 response So far, team? so good. Okay. Um, the team is doing excellent. Um, we had a big press conference yesterday, and we gave out very good advice mm -hmm. and recommendations, which we're going to put in writing and give it to the government. Okay. And hopefully, they would read it and accept a lot of our recommendations. Because these recommendations, we put a lot of thought into it and a lot of research and science into the document. So what hopefully, are some of the recommendations? So basically, we, we recommend, uh, we broke down the issues in the country into three things. Okay. The first one was um, public health management. Okay. You know, we're in the coronavirus, um, what we call the exponential phase, right? Mm. So we started off with few cases and now we're going incrementally, things are going up. As of yesterday, we went from 27 to 54. Mm -hmm. So we see that we are hitting, for everything, 53. it's a, a 53, sorry, and one more person is dead. So we see that we are hitting uh, the bell curve, you know, the top of the yeah. bell curve. So that's the exponential phase. So we are thinking, we're seeing that just based on the science of the disease and what we've seen in China and what we've seen in Italy and other countries, South Africa, UK, is that the cases are going to go up. Hmm. So we see that this has a big public health management issue. So we broke it into th uh, four components. The public health information, we asked for a robust information management. We looked at the impact on the community, which is a community impact mitigation. And the last one was the financing mm -hmm. to implement all of our programs that we're talking about. Okay, thank you very much for those updates. And I'm sure you'll be, you'll be giving us more as, as we go on um, with our fight with coronavirus. But again, uh, if you want us to hear from you, the hashtag to use is Breakfast Daily. And the WhatsApp line is 055 If you're outside Ghana, the country code is plus 233. I'll take our first story from the Ghanaian Times. I'm reading from page 17, and it says here, COVID-19 cases jumped to 53. Ghana's mm -hmm. COVID-19 cases jumped to 53. So Ghana's number of coronavirus uh, has jumped to from 27 to 53. That's according to the Minister of Health, Kweku Ajemai Menu, as he announced in Accra yesterday. And we'll break it down the 53, uh, sorry, the people, the 25, the initial 25 that he mentioned came from the controlled group of 1,030 passengers that were quarantined. And of that, 611 samples were taken. So I quote what he said. He says, out of the 185 tests, so he took 611 samples they are taking about 185 tests right now that they've completed and out of the 185 tests we have 25 of those quarantined was test positive if you add on to the earlier number of 27 it means we have 52 tested positive you know that later on during the day we learned that one more person had been added to it so as it stands now we have 53 positive cases in Ghana. And if you look at the front page of the daily graphic, we've broke, they've broken it down for us as far as where the situation is now. So 53 total confirmed cases, two deaths, 51 existing cases. Of the 51, 50 are imported and seven are foreign nationals out of that 50 that are imported. Three are community spread. We've been able to successfully trace about 829 as far as the contact tracing is concerned and zero have recovered. Uh, today, of course, is the national fasting and prayer day for both Christians and Muslims. So that the entire nation is praying. Grace, your initial thoughts on the number. I know you, you mentioned this earlier. Right now we have 53. 50 of those are imported, of the, of the imported seven are of foreign national, and we are, we are praying and we are fasting today as part of our efforts to, to combat this virus. Yes, um, the numbers are very worrying to us, um, the public health officials, because when we look at that the first death 
happen when we are twi number 27. Mm -hmm. Then we, within the next 24 hours, maybe 12 hours, we went from 27 to 50 something, 53, and a second person dead. So when we're looking at it, we look at the mortality rate outside the country or in other countries like in China and Italy, and we're looking at the based on what we are seeing and the number of deaths already in this small group of people. It almost looks like the mortality rate is higher in Ghana, mm. which is we're looking at maybe about five point something, when worldwide it's about 4.1. Okay. So that's the one issue. The second issue is the number that have been tested but the numbers will, will sample have been taken and the number that have actually been tested. That means that there's a large, even a bigger pool of people who have the samples taken but have not been tested. Hmm. That is where one of the issues that bothers us a lot. Okay. Because that means that we had, let's say, I don't remember the actual numbers, but 10 people came and we've only tested two. We've uh -huh. taken the samples of the eight. So the actual number was 1,030 okay. of those 611 samples were taken, mm -hmm. and they've been able to test 185 of those samples, okay. of which 25 came out as positive. So if you test 185 out of 600, that means there's more people whose sample you've taken that you haven't tested. Yes. And that is exactly what our committee is trying to prevent. Hmm. Because what we call now is like a um, test lag, yeah. you know, because there's a lag. There's a, a whole bunch more people that are waiting or have the sample but haven't been tested. That means that pretty soon our testing centers are going to be overwhelmed. But these people are a controlled group, right? So it's not as though they are, they are a reflection of our population. These are people who came into the country and were immediately quarantined. Can we use that as a, as a sample for the entire country? It's even worse when you can't even test all your control groups. Okay. I mean, that, that so? is the group that you should be able to quickly test. If you have a thousand something and then your control group, that's the group you should test first, right? Yes. Because by definition. So if you only tested out of 600, you've only tested a hundred and something. Mm -hmm. That means that you have almost 400 people and over that have not been tested. And they are that going are to in test your them. control group. Yes, yes. But that is where the problem is. Why is that that means that the, there's a lag in testing. That mm. means that the backlog mm -hmm. is almost 400 and something. Yes. That is what we don't want. Because even now that your group is small, only 1,000, mm -hmm. and you are having a backlog, what will happen if now we need to test more? Then your backlog will be bigger. Yes. And that is what we've been advising from the very beginning. What should we be doing? In instead? other words, from the beginning, the head of Noguchi came out and said, listen, we are the maybe the premier testing center in the country. Mm -hmm. We have one in Kumasi and one in Noguchi. And he said that even right now, that was two weeks ago, mm -hmm. that we are having problems with the test kit, like this, the materials mm -hmm. that we're using to test it. Not only that, our machines that we're using need servicing mm -hmm. or refurbishment. And these machines are old. Mm -hmm. This is the head of the institution, which is trying to do all they can to handle the whole entire country. But he also came out yesterday to say they, they, they have everything under control. But, but it's only, and the fact that there's a lag is only an indication that if more people come in, there's going to be a bigger lag. But do you agree with me, though, that these, this controlled group of 1,030, they were quarantined on Sunday? Right. They, they, were, they were all taken on Sunday. Today is Wednesday. As at Tuesday, if we've been able to at least bring results from 185 people, that's progress. Or, or you don't agree. And the information minister told us that it takes at least 30 minutes to complete an entire sample. So shouldn't we be, be happy that we are making progress? No. I see that the institution is doing the best it can under the circumstance. So let's give them credit for really helping us. What we are saying is that it is not enough. There's going to be a backlog. And when we have a backlog, that is when we start running into problems. Where would the so backlog come from? The if, backlog if will be if now of you have the cases are imported and we only have three community cases and we've closed our borders for two weeks. The community cases are only going to increase in a sense because now it's not people, foreigners or imported cases. When, once you go from the vertical to the horizontal, I mean, we're only saying this based on what has happened in other countries. Mm -hmm. It started the same thing in China. Then all of a sudden, the exponential phase, and they went to thousands and this and that.
It did the same thing in Spain. It is doing the same thing in the UK. It has done the same thing in South Africa. So we're saying that based on the nature of the particular disease, we need to start to maybe even more testing centers. Neguchi cannot be the only testing center that in Kumasi in the country. Mm -hmm. We are saying that this hundred million dollars that was supposed to come from somewhere that never materialized should we should find that money and provide testing centers in all regions. Hmm. That is the only way because right now I'm from Iskadukitan in the western region. We don't have a testing center. But as it says so, now, the cases are in Kumase and Accra. Shouldn't those two regions be our priority? Greater Accra region and Ashanti region. But when you're dealing with a global pandemic, you don't deal with the here and now. Hmm. You forecast okay. and you plan for the forecasting. That is why Italy right now is so almost completely destroyed economically, financially, um, socially, medically. Because they failed at some point when they should have forecasted. Mm. That's the only way you deal successfully with a global pandemic. You forecast, okay, right now, where are we? What do we anticipate is going to happen in the next two weeks? So what uh, measures do we have to put in place to meet that particular um, forecast? Okay. So right now, if you're talking about here and now, then you can say that we're okay. But if we're dealing with a global pandemic that has decimated places like China, has decimated places like Italy with one, some of the best healthcare systems, is now in the process of almost decimating the United States of America. And you're saying that, oh, because we've tested this, it's okay. No, we're saying that forecast, look beyond what is happening now. Because the nature of the disease has shown us. This is not something that we are, we've seen the movie before. It's like you've seen the same movie three times and you are failing to prepare for the movie that you're going to come in into your house. Mm -hmm. All the regions you have testing centers, there's no doubt. In the Western region today, there is no testing center. So if somebody gets it, they have to take the sample and bring it to Accra. By the time they get to Accra and the sample gets to Neguchi, for instance, what if, for instance, even in Accra, there's people that are calling for lockdown and things, even if Accra is locked down, how will our samples from Western region get to Accra? We are saying forecast. It's a global pandemic. We cannot deal with it like business as usual. We need to step up our game. We need to provide testing centers in every region. If not, even maybe more, go down to maybe every district. The testing should be close to the people so the testing is done rapidly. Because where we are right now, eventually we might even go to mass testing. Hmm. Have we thought about all those things? So that is why the committee is making all these recommendations. So that by the time we get there, we would have prepared. It's called emergency preparedness, mm -hmm. disaster preparedness. That means that you prepare for the disaster and you maybe even project. And in a situation like this, which is a global pandemic that is decimating countries, it's even better to over project than to under project because it's only when you've over projected that you are protected when the incident happens. Yeah. So that is why we are the group. That is what the group is saying. And that is what we had the press conference yesterday about. Okay, so we'll take a look at some of the other measures that the government is taking. I'm reading from citynewsroom.com, and it says, Government runs to IMF for loan to help fight the coronavirus. So it says here, Ghana has turned to the International Monetary Fund for financial support to combat the novel coronavirus pandemic. The IMF, in a press release, disclosed that the government has requested a rapid credit facility disbursement. IMF's African Development Department director, sorry, is quoted as saying, last week the IMF received Ghana's request for a disbursement under the rapid credit facility to help the country address the economic impact of COVID-19 pandemic. We are working hard to evaluate the authorities' request and bring it forward for executive board consideration as soon as possible. So in addition to the $100 million that the president has directed the finance minister to make available for us to deal with coronavirus, we're also going to the IMF to ensure that we are well equipped and prepared for this battle. Your thoughts on this, Grace? 
Okay, first of all, we haven't seen this $100 million. Okay. Because you remember that the finance minister went to parliament and was now telling us the actual details of the $100 million, mm -hmm. that it wasn't even available and that he was going to go to this World Bank and go to IMF and go to WHO and these people to kind of source these funds and put it together to make up the $100 million. Okay. So the $100 million was said, but the, number, the money never really materialized. Mm -hmm. So... What we are saying in our committee is that there is another f a, a source of funding in every country when there's an emergency. We have emergency resources or emergency money that we can pull out of our existing budget or existing funds. It's not at the time of the emergency that you're now going to look for money. Mm -hmm. At the time of the emergency, that you're now going to write letters to IMF. What should we be doing instead? You sh every, we should have a contingency plan or contingency money. Why isn't that what the $100 million is for? It's not there. Now they are, this $100 million is money that they, I mean, not according to me, but according to the finance minister, he has ways of which he's going to solicit mm -hmm. for this. Is there anything wrong with getting additional money to help us? You rightly said that we need more testing centers. We would need money to, 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 to get those centers, no? There is nothing wrong with soliciting. But when you are in the crisis, in the emergency, it's not now that you're going to look for the money. Okay. So my committee said that only beginning of this year, the government went for a $3 billion euro bond. Mm -hmm. Out of that $3 uh, billion, they put $1 billion aside mm -hmm. for some sort of a contingency plan. I think the plan was that they were going to buy... Um, I'm not a finance person. Don't worry. So. <laughs> Go ahead. So, so don't quote me on it, right? <laughs> the, the idea of that set aside $1 billion was that they were going to buy, I think, for instance, if somebody owes, has a loan, then mm -hmm. you buy it back and... Oh, whatever God. the finance word for that term is, right? Mm -hmm. So we're seeing that if that money exists, or that money is there, mm -hmm. it's one billion. Take the hundred million out of it. Mm -hmm. If you can take fifty million or hundred million, whatever amount that you think you need, the money is here. It's already in the country. Mm -hmm. Take that. Let's use it for our emergency preparedness. Let's build the testing the centers. centers in the other um, districts or regions. In Western region, I can only speak because that's where Western I'm from. Region, yeah. We don't even have one ICU bed. Hmm. The whole entire Western region doesn't have ICU. And how important have, is it for the ICU beds as far as Because the coronavirus, coronavirus when, let's say, 10 people get infected, mm -hmm. three of them might end up having worse disease and might require hospital care. Mm -hmm. That is why when you hear the America, when you hear um, Italy, when you hear Spain, they're all talking about we need more ventilators. Mm -hmm. The ventilator, because of the nature of the virus, what the virus does is it goes through your mucous membrane, gets through your throat, so people will get mild cold, some of them will have sore throat, and quickly what it wants to do is get to the deeper part of your lungs. Mm. And when it gets there, that is where the 3% that gets sick, that is where the problem begins. Because once it's there, it's causing fibrosis and your body is trying to fight it. And pretty soon, the ba lower bases of your lungs get filled with fluid. So you will need the ventilator. So you will need the ventilator. So it's a respiratory crisis. Mm -hmm. The end stage is a respiratory crisis for almost all the patients. Um, patients. Even some of them, is not a end-stage pneumonia respiratory crisis but it is a mild respiratory crisis so you need the ventilators to breathe for them temporarily and then once their respiratory systems get better you take them off those ventilators the whole western region doesn't have it not okay. one okay but doesn't that justify why we should be getting more money from the IMF it justifies why we should have the money here in country ready to use okay while we are soliciting money from the IMF okay so use this money I, you don't know when the IMF is going to give you the money, but we are in a crisis situation as of today. Mm. Actually, let me tell you, we were in a crisis situation two weeks ago. Okay. So to tell me that today you are going to find the money and bring it when is not how you manage any crisis. Okay. Thank you very Thank much. You. Some people still believe that we have $100 million uh, to fight the coronavirus. This is still yeah. Breakfast Daily it's on City TV. Uh, if you want to contribute to the conversation, the hashtag is Breakfast Daily. And the WhatsApp line is 0550 If you're outside Ghana, the country code is plus 233. We will hear from Barbara Asha Ayisi right after these messages.
Welcome back. This is still Breakfast Daily on City TV. Thank you so much for staying with us. Again, if you want us to hear from you, the hashtag is Breakfast Daily. If you want to reach us directly, the WhatsApp line is 0550585832. If you're outside Ghana, the country code is plus 233. Before the break, Grace was giving us a, her thoughts on the IMF bid. We know that Ghana is trying to raise $100 million to deal with this coronavirus, and part of that is going to the IMF. But, but you're saying we shouldn't be doing that now. We should have done this a long time ago, but what's wrong with us doing it right now? Because we do need to raise the money. But right now, people are dying. Oh, two, two people are dead. Yes. So when two people are dead, even one person, if only one person was dead, you should have the money now to resource all of our, uh, even our frontline workers are complaining they don't have PPEs. Mm -hmm. So... But we, we, the, the, the Government said yesterday that we're going to get about 10,000 PPEs. When? Mm -hmm. And 10,000 is not even enough. Okay. Because PPEs are one-time use equipment or garments. Mm -hmm. We have different types of PPEs, but PPEs are usually one-time use. So as a surgeon, if I do five procedures, I have to change myself five times. My mask, my glove, and my gown five times for each person because I cannot take the gown and the mask and the glove to treat one patient and then bring all that patient's mucus things to another patient. Mm -hmm. So it's called cross contamination. So because we don't do that, if I operate five patients in a day, I wear five different protective equipments or garments. Wow. So 10,000 protective equipment is not even enough for one hospital. Okay. I so think. you hear the numbers and they sound good. All we are saying is that let's take this money. Mm -hmm. Let's use it now. Okay. The issue is now. The issue is not soon. It's not coming later. It's not sometime next week, this weekend. The issue is now. In fact, it should have happened yesterday. Okay. The border controls, uh, the border patrol people or the border agents are complaining they don't have PPEs. The house officers in Kolibu are complaining. These are premier hospitals. Mm -hmm. Rich hospital um, doctors are complaining. The nurse midwifery is complaining. The Naguchi itself is saying that we don't have enough testing supplies and our equipments are old. So all these agencies, it's not just one person saying it, are all saying the same thing. When okay. you go to the Western region today, none of our health workers have PPEs. Well, I'm sure so they they'll, get, they'll arrived, get some of the 10,000 very, very soon. But it, it, imagine. So it's like me us saying that we're going to make you the journalist of the year or the person to run the show, right? Mm -hmm. But we're not going to give you the cameras and we're not going to give you the mic well, we're saying they've arrived. So you're saying when will they get to the specific hospitals? No, but they've arrived and you haven't received it. Mm -hmm. And we're saying that come and do the show, mm -hmm. but use your own voice and shout on the top of your voice so all the radio stations will hear. Okay. Will you be comfortable? Okay. Yeah, so once we task the people to do the job, we should provide them the necessary equipment and garments and protect them as well. Okay. It is our duty to do that. Thank you very Thank much. You. We'll now hear from... Barbara Ashaisi, she's the Deputy Minister for Works and Housing. Good morning, Barbara. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine, and you? I'm good. Uh, we, we first started talking about the number of positive cases in Ghana. It is now 53. Two people have died, unfortunately. 50 of those cases are imported cases, uh, but of those, seven are foreign national and three are community cases. We know that today is the National Fasting and Praying Day, so we'll hear your initial thoughts on it, and then we'll move into the IMF bit that we were discussing. Okay, thank you for the opportunity, and uh, let me use this huge platform to say good morning to the good people of Ghana. A special good morning to my constituents, Cape Coast North, and to everyone watching us uh, this morning. I'm very much excited that uh, His Excellency, the President, has realized that in situations like this, we yeah. need God. Mm -hmm. We all have different beliefs, but the ultimate is God. That doesn't also mean that um, you shouldn't work hard. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't put certain measures in place that will help curb uh, this pandemic. But we need to seek the face of God because we're human. You can do everything. You can clean your hands. You can use sanitizers. You can avoid social gathering, but if there is 
no God. no God or supernatural being protecting and guiding, guarding us. I don't think we'll be able to do anything. So we should all join. I'm entreating all of us. Um, some of us find it difficult to fast though. <laughs> but <laughs> if you can do from morning till evening, you can maybe break around 12 yeah. and stay home mm -hmm. as much as possible and then pray and intervene. But, but what, whilst we're praying, we also have to make sure that we adhere to um, the various preventive measures that we've all been hammering on all mm -hmm. this while. Okay. So, so far so good. But um, I think the when IMF we came, there were so many issues that <laughs> you were discussing. Yeah. And one of them is the IMF, IMF uh, um, um, loan yeah. to support us. The president has indicated that we are supporting or we are putting in $100 million, which I think that is something uh, that we all have to be happy about. It is not politics because this pandemic is... All of us are at risk, mm -hmm. and so it's not politics. Yeah. And I am very, 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 my sister was saying that there's no this, this, this. Sometimes we talk, but let's walk the talk. Mm -hmm. So we are sure the good people of Ghana that we have that money, mm -hmm. that fund. Of course, we might not have it um, all in bulk. You have to solicit for support here and there, you know, just to make sure that you have that amount. But that is different from what the IMF um, loan. Mm -hmm. This is a, a fan or a package that countries who are suffering or who have been affected, or I mean, this is now a pandemic. So it's different from the 100 million? It's uh, not part of the no, 100 million we're different. looking to raise? Okay. It's, it's different. Okay. So if you are a country and you feel that, no, you need some support, mm -hmm. you can go into it. You can, you know, uh, ask for it. You can apply. So it is not as different from what the president is saying. That doesn't mean that there's, you don't have that money. Of course, if you don't have money, I don't see why if you don't have money, you can just come out and say that you have the money. So where is the 100 million coming from exactly? Of course, it's coming from different funds. Which, uh, which kind of funds? We have the uh, contingency fund. Okay. Sometimes, of course, you always, always have to be ready mm -hmm. for emergencies. Yeah. The, the health... Um, Ministry of Health mm -hmm. also has its budget. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you have, you know, some money is allocated for certain emergencies. Mm -hmm. you see, so you put all these resources So the contingency together. fund, which other funds? Are we, the Ministry of from? Health, okay. you see, and I'm sure there are other funds that, you but know. But it doesn't include IMF, World that Bank. That is different. That's, the, the that's not part is, of the 100 million we're that is, to No, raise. that is different. As okay. far as I'm concerned, that is different. Okay. So this is, you know, money available, loan available mm. to countries who feel that no because you need to prepare you can never tell mm. look at what happened in italy okay. nobody expected that we could have huge numbers mm -hmm. when it started in um and china um, um yeah china china yeah you realize that we, people felt that it was a joke mm -hmm. but look at how it escalated mm. so we need to make sure that we have enough funds that is why i would even be excited that individuals philanthropies um yesterday i heard that mcdan and other groups also came in to support, even as a member of parliament in Cape Coast North, I'm also doing my bid. Mm -hmm. So this is, is, the, is, all of us have to come together to fight this pandemic. Mm -hmm. So if um, the president is saying that, mm -hmm. we have this money available and there is this opportunity, you know, the, uh, f from the IMF mm -hmm. to support countries who mm -hmm. feel that, you know, they need that support. Mm -hmm. And we can, you know, actually assess that fund. What is wrong with that? But the deputy finance minister, uh, Dubois actually said in Parliament that the 100 million was going to come from the IMF, yes. the World Bank, and internal resources. Thank so um, I'm, I'm yeah, the IMF has different saying. funds. Uh -huh. Yes, probably maybe I have to f find out. But I know that as much as I'm concerned, this fund is different from what the, pre the, min the president indicated. So what Charles Dubois was referring yes. to is different okay. from this fund? That's what you're. That is what I know. Okay. Yes, okay. so I'm speaking for myself. What you know. Because okay. the president indicated that mm. the 100 million mm -hmm. is to fight this pandemic. Mm -hmm. And I also know that the IMF has this fund mm -hmm. where people, you know, countries could assess. Okay. So as far as I'm concerned, I feel that they are different. Okay. Yes. But I don't, I'm not with the Ministry of, you know, Finance. Finance. Yeah, and I'm so. also not with health. So I cannot uh, speak for them. But that is what I know. No, okay. That they are so separate funds. Yourself. Okay. Exactly. Thank you very much. Do you want to respond to that and then we'll move on to our next topic? I'm just amazed. Absolutely amazed that she Why? doesn't even... Because the, when the finance minister went to with the deputy finance minister went to parliament, mm -hmm. they stated specifically what they wanted to, the, to use mm -hmm. the money for. Mm -hmm. 
So if you are well, what did they say? They said they were going to the IMF. She just read it. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying that from, they have different funds. Yeah. Okay. We are all aware that the IMF has different funds. Absolutely. Mean, has different funds. So I am we saying that it's different from what, as far as yeah. I'm concerned, Can what, I what the okay. president so said. So I'll let her respond. Then then respond then we'll move that's on. We okay. are specifically talking about that $100 million US, US dollar. That's the one we are talking about. We know they have different funds. Mm -hmm. The issue here is not the different fund. It's the one million, one, what? 100 million. 100 million. That yes. is the only fund we're discussing right now. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And when the Minister of Finance and Deputy went to the parliament, they told us specifically how they plan to get it. So when you are, there was none of it, did they say Ministry of Health was going to, their budgetary allocations was going to be used for this fund. Now what I'm trying to say is, okay, what the, the point, we are trying to confuse two things. Okay. No. Yeah, yes, because I'll, we are talking about what the president said, uh -huh. and then what, what the, 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 the IMF, oh, the IMF is, okay. is, I mean the, the loan yes. that we can accept from IMF. And okay. I'm saying that mm -hmm. the money is there, because you're speaking as if we don't have that money. Mm -hmm. You see, mm -hmm. we know that there are different sources. Of course, when you say that you have this amount of money, you can go for it from different sources. Okay. Yes, yeah, so I'm saying that the IMF, the IMF, the loans that we are talking about now, which you are referring to, mm -hmm. is different from what the president indicated. Okay, that's perfectly fine. So move on to our next topic here. I'm reading yeah. from page So the money is there. We are sure the good people the of daily Ghana. daily guide. And it says here, Attorney, Attorney General fights... NIA injunction. So, Office of the Attorney General has filed an application contesting the decision of an Accra High Court, which granted an interlocutory injunction against the Ghana Card mass registration exercise being carried out by the NIA in the Eastern Region. According to the court documents signed by the Deputy Attorney General Godfrey Yabua Dame, the, applica the applicants did not satisfy the court on an essential criterion for the grant of an interlocutory injunction such as the one the court granted. So they go on to say, and I'm, I'm going to continue on page four, that the entire case of applicants is hinged on either a, ma a misreading or deliberate misconstruction of the address given by the president to the people. Again, the motion noted that the NIA had put in place measures to curtail the possible spread of the virus as all staff members of NIA were provided with personal protection equipments such as hand sanitizers, gloves, Veronica buckets, among others. So there's, there's no reason why they can't continue on with the registration. So I'll hear your thoughts on this, especially as you are, you, you are a doctor, so you, you can this also... This issue for me mm. is really the most tragic issue of all of what's happening right now. Why? We are in a global pandemic. Mm -hmm. Countries have been shut down. Economies have been decimated. Mm -hmm. Health systems have been decimated. Our president has put out uh, an advisory to say that we should all stay indoors, no, um, as part of preventing the spread of the disease. No grouping more than 25 people. We are all excited that, okay, now this is going to curb the spread of the disease. While we are doing all this, people have died. While we are doing all this, the same president or the same government is in court arguing by our deputy attorney general that we should allow registration. Have you seen a registration center? Mm -hmm. It's chaotic. There are too many people. People are stressed. They are waiting. Even if you provide your um, workers, the NIA workers, with personal protective equipment, what about the other people in the room? Well, they are respecting social distancing rules. So you see some of the pictures, the chairs are spaced out. And so if, if they follow those rules, shouldn't they be, if they're taking precautionary measures, shouldn't they be fine? I mean, this, I don't even think is, we should even be discussing it because I think in all of this, this is the most tragic and if not tragic, so I will cry, then it's laughable. What's wrong with taking precautionary measures and ensuring we that the numbers are low? We shouldn't even be doing this in the first place. We have told churches, don't go to church. Then why don't you say church, go to church and do the social distancing in church? Right? Because some of us also want to go to church. Instead of doing a national day of prayer, I want to go to my church. I'm a Methodist. Mm -hmm. I want to go to my church and sit in my church and pray. Mm -hmm. So why don't you say that? Then go to church and observe social distancing. Mm -hmm. Right? 
go to school and observe social distancing. But close church, close school, but go and register. I mean, this makes absolutely no sense and is the most tragic of it all, especially for the people in the eastern region. Because there is no... Um, and then they are doing biometric registration. So everybody's fingerprint, you put it on that thing, then you do the whatever fingerprint thing. So everybody, forget the, even the workers, let's assume they are protected. Everybody goes and put their fingers on the same machine. I mean, can you really imagine? I think it's reckless. I think it's dangerous. And I think we shouldn't even be having this discussion in this time of a national pandemic where you, yourself, the government, and the president have declared a national day of prayer. So we're going to go to church and pray today, have all kinds of prayerful songs and meetings, and then the next day, some of our people are exposed to the coronavirus at a voting center. How important is this voter register anyway? in the midst of a global pandemic. Well, it's a, it's a national identification. You need your national ID, right? If something happens to you, it's important. And if, according to the Deputy Attorney General, if you're following all the things that you're supposed to do, providing hand sanitizers, providing, you know, PPEs, respecting social distancing, the president didn't say business shouldn't go on. He just closed down the churches and, and mosques and schools. But businesses should go on, but respect these protocols. So what about the churches? I, I ask you, you didn't answer. I'm saying that. Why can't you let the people go to mosque and also observe social distancing? Mm -hmm. Then, I mean, it's almost as if you say one thing and then he contradicts himself. Because saying that let churches and mosques stop going to the churches and the mosque and saying that it's okay to go and as long as, so why don't you say that people can go to church and mosque as long as they can observe social distancing? Okay. It's, you say that you gave out the order, mm -hmm. then you yourself turn around and try to contradict what you just said that the people are observing. And right now our only defense, mm. our health system is not robust. We all know that. We've mm -hmm. seen it. Me, I've seen pregnant women with their babies on the floor. Mm -hmm. I have been to emergency rooms where there are no mattresses on the bed where the people buy plastic chairs and sit in, uh, on the chair in the emergency department. So we know that our health system is not robust. Mm -hmm. So our only defense against this global pandemic that has destroyed countries is the teachings that we are doing, public education. Mm -hmm. Wash your hands. Make sure you use hand sanitizer. Use soap and water. Social distancing. Those are our only protection. So now you're going to go to voter, uh, what, national... ID card registration and remove all that where you have already said we should do. It makes zero sense and I think it's reckless. The people of Eastern Region should not even bother to go because this national card is not important. It's not, the, it's not because of national card. It's, not, it's a life or death situation we are talking about here. And you're saying that the national card is more important than people's health, than the public health, than the national health. That okay. is almost, I mean, this for me is where, you know, I start like tearing my hair. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Barbara. Okay, thank uh, Grace you. is saying we, we should not. She does not agree with the Deputy Attorney General at all. What your thoughts on on? Well, there's no doubt that mm -hmm. the Ghana card is important. Mm. Uh, of course, uh, we are all looking forward to uh, a new voters register, mm -hmm. and you need the Ghana card to be able to register. But as we are saddled with this pandemic, of course, we, we are all very much agitated and worried. And uh, the president himself indicated that um, times are really you know, difficult. Yeah. And so once the court has actually ruled that you know, we should suspend uh, mm -hmm. the registration, I think that we'll still go by that. And we don't have to waste too much time to go to go into what the Deputy Attorney General General. So you don't agree? He expressed his opinion. Okay. He thought that we ah. could because we're still living. I mean I'm here. When I got here, your makeup artist wanted to, you know, touch, uh, touch do a touch up. Yeah. It was, we see the makeup even kids. I don't know who they might have used. Yes. But they sanitize but it, okay. they wash yes. their hands. No, but we have but a limit. So he felt that we still measures. have to take precautions. So he's, yeah. we still go to parliament. Mm -hmm. We're still taking precautions. Well, there's a parliamentarian who says he's not coming to parliament saying, anymore. Well, in a way, but mm -hmm. we also need to work for the good people of Ghana. Mm -hmm. You see, when they sit, we have experts mm. who are re on the ground, who would guide and coach us, who would tell us at this time that we all need, it, need to be in Do you think people should register or stay home for the... For the 
But the court has ruled, then we all agree. So, Absolutely. Okay, so, so I don't want us to don't waste want to, okay. too much time talking about this. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. My pleasure. Very much. We have some messages from you guys that are read. AU Farouk from Tamale North says, only Allah save us from this deadly COVID-19. We should all follow the measures given by the health experts. Good morning, Jifa. I believe worst cases may be recorded in other parts of the country if every center had the test kits. Yes. We should have prepared long before the virus hit yeah. This is not how to handle a pandemic. Okay. Even developed countries are struggling bitterly. Mm -hmm. We are talking of Accra and Kumasi because these places have the required test kits. This is coming from Abraham from Winneba. Bamba, Bambamu from Tamale Central says the move by government to take a bold initiative to IMF for loans to help in dealing with this deadly coronavirus is a step in the right direction. Government efforts in fighting this COVID-19 pandemic so far has been superb. It's time we religiously observe all health safety tips given to us. We continue to urge our politicians to please stay away Absolutely. with their politicking and help fight this virus with a united front. Spread calm no, no panic. Good morning, I'm Emmanuel from Ho. We need to take a clue from some of the developed countries that got the worst hit. Mm -hmm. Most of them underestimated the yes. magnitude of destruction of COVID-19 uh, poses to humanity. Ghana needs to undertake robust measures mm -hmm. by forecasting and anticipating the severity of the sickness. There should be a mass testing ongoing Thank now, you. and testing centers need to be decentralized in every Thank part you. of the country. That's the only way we can ascertain the true reflection of the numbers of confirmed cases so as to mitigate against further spread and eventually contain the virus. You didn't put your name, but thank you so much for that message. I'll hear both of your closing remarks and then we'll be done with the news review. The Starting with you, Grace. The gentleman's comment, the last comment, is the perfect way I want to end um, this conversation. Um, we on the COVID-19 technical team exactly agree with them. Okay. In other words, we should not underestimate the magnitude of this pandemic. We should forecast, we should make funds available. We've shown them where to find the funds to get it done now, okay. not tomorrow, not next week, not someday. Right we now. are in a global pandemic and it's an emergency. Thank you very so much. So once we do that, we also want to um, tell the rest of the country or let them know that we are all in this together. Okay. The committee is here to help, and we are not here to play politics or to. Um, Thank just, you very much, we Grace. I have, let, I have to let Barbara. Uh, okay, okay. Just just touch on it Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. There should be calm. Okay. There should be calm. This government is committed to ensuring that you know we are safe. Okay. And so that is why. The, the borders have been closed. Mm -hmm. We're making sure that those who come to the country are quarantined. Mm -hmm. And we're also making sure that we do a lot of education, mm -hmm. not sitting in Accra, going to all the other, you know, small, small communities okay. in this country to ensure that, you know, we, we hear about the pandemic. Mm -hmm. But a lot depends on us. Mm -hmm. The government will do it bit, like we are all saying that we need more centers. We'll do that. But we also have a role to play. As we shouldn't, as Ghanaians, okay. we shouldn't underestimate this virus, what, you know, what, what it can do. So please, let's take the measures. Thank you. If they're saying that we should avoid funerals and social gatherings, we should do that. Thank you very much. And stay Barbara safe. Barbara Ayasha AUC is a Deputy Minister for Works and Housing. And Dr. Grace Ayen Sudankwa is a member of the NDC COVID-19 response team and parliamentary candidate for a Sikado Ketan constituency. Oh, Sikado. Thank you both for being with us. We hope you've enjoyed the show. Make sure you subscribe, like, comment, and share with your friends. This is Breakfast Daily on City TV. Join the Breakfast Daily team Monday through Fridays from 7.30 a.m. to 10. Join us for breakfast daily only on City TV.